I'm not transgender, non-binary, I don't want to be searched by a man. I'm transgender, non-binary, and I don't want to be searched by a man. I claim my Fourth Amendment rights. I got assaulted in this bar twice in a row. I film myself when I get assaulted for NFT crypto art. What's your name? What's your badge number? Tell me your name and your badge number. White key. What did I do wrong? The okay, guy in that bar declared himself as a Nazi. I have it on film and he attacked me. Okay. Learn it. Did you want to fight? Is that the deal? Whoa, bro, 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 bro. How do you go from teenage movie star rising through the ranks of Hollywood until you're in some of the biggest franchises on the planet to assaulting women in public for absolutely no reason at all? Well, that's just Hollywood, baby. And if you think these clips were bad, you ain't seen nothing yet. If you watch my channel often, you know I've covered stories about hackers, identity theft and general fraud dozens of times, and that's why I'm happy to talk today about the sponsor of this video, Aura. Every few seconds someone's identity is stolen. Every single day there is a website that sells or loses your information, and that information is how this happens. I know for me personally, I had someone trying to take out credit cards in my name only a few months ago, just before I made a video talking about stalkers on twitch.tv and how being an internet personality can bring with it a lot of security issues both in real life and online. So Aura is a service that helps you stay safe online with features like credit monitoring which alerts you if someone tries to access credit in your name, identity protection that alerts you if any of your personal info has been compromised, an antivirus, a VPN, password manager, and more. Aura has something for everyone if you're trying to stay safe. I know Google Chrome alerts me sometimes that websites have been breached and they've lost my data, but Aura takes it one step further and actively searches for your information online, including the dark web, which is where a lot of modern identity thieves do their business nowadays. If you go to the link in the video description or visit aura.com forward slash Kira TV, you can get a 14 day free trial right now. And thanks again to Aura for sponsoring this video. On with the content. This is Ezra Miller, born September 30th, 1992 in New Jersey. Ezra grew up in a stable home with two older sisters, a modern dancer for a mother, and a vice president and managing director of Hyperion Books for a father. At age six, Ezra started training opera to overcome a speech impediment, something they excelled at. They also later dropped out of high school at age 16 to pursue a career on the big screen, a decision that in hindsight worked out fantastically. You've probably seen Ezra in a movie or two, as they've been on the ascendancy through Hollywood since their first ever role in 2008's After School. The movie to really blow up their career though is titled We Need to Talk About Kevin, in which Ezra plays a school sh** that uses a bow to murder several children. A role that Ezra seems to comfortably slip into as they often do in those of unsettling, intense individuals. Following that, in 2012, Ezra played Patrick in The Perks of Being a Wallflower, a role that was different entirely, but one that Ezra described as manic. But, uh, yeah, you know, I think there's a, a, an element to him that's that I maybe discovered to be a little manic. You know, he keeps the party going. There's a very clear commonality in the roles Ezra played until this point. They had a talent for portraying the weird, and that isn't solely down to acting. I'm, I'm, I'm Do you willing. feel weird? I feel very weird. Do you? Yeah, I mean... In yeah. life? Yeah, it's bizarre. Doesn't everybody feel really weird? Yes. Okay, yes. I wanted to check on but that. But I don't know... Because you can as never a, be sure if everybody the feels way weird. other I, people feel weird I, is exactly this, how... I don't think it's the same. And nobody is quite casting you as the boy next door. They haven't done that yet. Mm, yeah. Right, it's true. So do people, agents, managers, people come to say to you, you're a type? Um, I keep myself in the company of one agent. He's, he really, he understands, or I, I, I really feel that he understands me as a person and sees that even though I might be a particular type of weird mm -hmm. in the world, that that particular type of weird, I think and I hope, lends itself to being able to approach and uh, uh, capture many types of weird. After a few other movies that I've personally seen, such as Madame Bovary, The Stanford Prison Experiment, and Trainwreck, Ezra really hit the jackpot. They would get to play DC Comics' The Flash, coming to big screen as part of the push to compete with Marvel for a chunk of that big blockbuster cash cow. And 2016 being such a big year for The Rising Star, they were also introduced into the Harry Potter universe spin-off, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. 
Beyond 2016, every movie Ezra Miller has been involved in are part of these two franchises, aside from something called Asking For It and an unreleased film called Dallyland, which reportedly hasn't cut them from the movie but did remove their name from the credits, which might seem odd to you until we go over exactly what Ezra has been doing off screen for the past few years. It all begins with the minor stuff, as it always does, being caught with 20 grams of cannabis, big deal right, no one cares, and a few other minor run-ins like this, but nothing that sets off alarm bells. Until July 2017, a fan asked if Ezra was drunk, to which they replied that the Flash can't physically get drunk. The fan decided to ask if he could smell Ezra's breath in a clearly joking manner, at which point this happens. Let me smell your breath! Because he has a fast metabolism. Let me smell your breath. Clearly, Ezra is in fact inebriated in the clip, but that doesn't excuse the fact they kissed a fan without any form of concern, and what surprised me is the reaction people gave to this incident. The fans around cheered, and Ezra joked, how did it smell, as they walked away. This isn't the most damning thing in the world, but what it did was clearly illustrate Ezra Miller's eccentric, impulsive, and out-of-control behavior, attributes that almost certainly contribute to the star's ability to portray characters in the believable manner that they do, but ones that need to be checked before they get you in trouble in the real world. Life isn't a movie and you can't just go around doing things like this. Unfortunately, no one seemed to be checking Ezra, as made clear from the media's reaction to this incident, which shocked me in how much it seemed to be looked over or downplayed as playful or fun, rather than what it was. Following this, more minor incidents, but nothing too major, at least in the public's knowledge. 2020 was the year where, despite the solidified success of Ezra's career, everything started to go downhill, and no one is exactly sure why, though a guess would be mental health complications, and if the situation is anything like most others in Hollywood, some form of substance abuse. The choking of a fan incident, which was caught on camera and went somewhat viral, if you watch this clip without audio, it looks like the fan mistook Ezra for a wrestling star and asked to be chokeslammed. In reality, the fan was excited to interact with them and thought everything was a joke. Ezra was not joking. They had to be dragged off the top of the woman they were choking, escorted off the premises, all the while literally spitting in the face of the bar owner where this occurred. Though there doesn't appear to be any criminal charges filed, an odd result considering if a regular person were to do this in 2020 and have the video spread online, they would face charges and almost certainly lose their job. But hey, Ezra is famous, so I guess you can sexually or physically assault fans on camera, and that's okay. Despite this backlash, companies were fine continuing to work with them. A few months after this, Ezra was arrested in Hawaii, following a physical altercation in a bar. People were singing karaoke, and Ezra decided to start screaming obscenities, grabbing the microphone from a woman that was singing, and attacking a man playing darts before police arrived and took them away. A few hours later, Ezra was bailed out by the couple that owned the local hostel they were staying at, something you would think nets you some form of gratitude, Instead, according to that couple, they had to file a restraining order, as Ezra immediately began stealing their possessions, which included passports and wallets, and threatening them with, quote, I will bury you and your s wife. Not long after, Ezra was arrested again in Hawaii for throwing a chair at a woman's head, sending them to the hospital with a gash that required stitches, as well as multiple other incidents, as police claimed to have arrested them about a dozen times in a handful of months. This behaviour continued with increased frequency for the next two years until early 2022. It got so bad in fact that executives at the studios Ezra was contracted to were having emergency meetings trying to find out what they could do to stop Ezra's behaviour in public. Of course, they failed. Ezra posted a video on social media in which they ask a local racist group to remove themselves from this mortal realm and then goes on to threaten them. Bad goose wizard. And um, this is a message for the Beulahville chapter of the North Carolina clan. Hello, first of all, how are y'all doing? Um, it's me. Um, look, if y'all want to die, I suggest just yourselves with your own guns. Okay? Um, otherwise... Keep doing exactly what you're doing right now, and you know what I'm talking about. And then, you know, um, we'll do it for you if that's really what you want. 
Okay, talk to you soon, okay? Bye! Which is odd, considering there was no recorded activity of any racist groups even in this area, so nobody knows exactly who Ezra was threatening. After this, the real allegations began to come in, and they were some of the more disgusting ones you can think of, though not entirely surprising, considering the things that have come out regarding Hollywood in recent years. When Ezra was visiting North Dakota in 2016, they went to Standing Rock Reservation, which is where they met Takata, a 12-year-old girl. At this time, Ezra was 23. They somehow formed a bond and remained in contact, which is already odd for a 23 and a 12-year-old, but things take a turn for the worse when according to Chase Ionize and wife Sarah Jumping Eagle, Ezra flew their daughter to London to visit the set of Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them in 2017. At this point, the then 25-year-old Ezra allegedly provided the 14-year-old Takata with alcohol, marijuana and LSD while trying to sleep in the same bed as them. Now, it's important to remember that these are, of course, allegations. I want to make that clear and I also want to make clear that the flying out did actually verifiably happen. So questions need to be asked of everyone involved in the situation, such as why did the parents allow their 14 year old daughter to fly to another continent to stay with a fully grown adult that befriended their 12 year old daughter in the first place? As well as the people who work on the set of the movie, why were they not questioning that this was going on? According to reports and the parents, Ezra offered to pay for Takata's college tuition through their affiliated organization called Quiet Organization, which didn't end up working out as Takata dropped out of school in 2021 to go and live with Ezra at a farm in Vermont. Takata has since confirmed in an interview that while they were staying with Ezra, they were microdosing LSD, but says her parents are lying and that Ezra is not grooming or abusing them. Despite when they visited in Vermont, they claim Ezra had taken Takata's phone, keys and wallet, as well as left bruises on Takata's body. Regardless of whether there is physical abuse going on, a clearly mentally unstable adult struck up a relationship with a 12 year old child, flew them across the world to spend time together alone and allowed or convinced them to leave their parents to go and stay together in their home. It will burn. It's wow. super simple. It's been said to you a billion that. times. Not seven times. Not, this oh, deep, we man. say we're the man. last prophet every time we come. Iyahahawe, we are the living. You are done. Burn, fish fry, baby. This shit is delicious. You ever been to Rwanda? Like you think you're safe anywhere on the land that is my mother's land. Or in the sky. Go to outer space, motherfucker. <laughs> That's the easiest shit. I sent a bullet in outer space 500 billion years ago to arrive a gravitational wave just to destroy your spaceship. That's how I do shit. The Flash, motherfucker. It's timeless. It's Hermes, Trismegistus, thrice blessed. And you're stressed now because you're watching a video some cat took in a car in Rwanda. Ponda that shit. Haile Selassie right, guy. Right, Selassie right, right, right. three. Right, right. This is clearly someone who is incapable of making logical or moral decisions for themselves, let alone a child. A child that has had their head filled with similarly incoherent ramblings for years since they met. According to the Twitter account of Takata's parents, their daughter and Ezra are still missing. They don't know where to find them. On top of this, Ezra seemed to be taunting the parents who were looking for their daughter with posts on Instagram, which of course they have since deleted. If this was the only thing to happen regarding allegations of violence, manic behavior or grooming of children, that would be one thing, right? Ezra Miller's situation is a whole different thing entirely. Following this, there have been claims made from all over the globe of very similar situations. One such instance comes from Greenfield, Mass on February 2nd, when a family were visiting a neighbor along with their 12 year old, when Ezra arrived in his bulletproof vest. Yes, Ezra wears a bulletproof vest wherever he travels in the United States, even when going to a friend's house. They described the situation as Ezra acting erratically and at one point claimed a board game has Rastafarian roots, which somebody questioned, at which point Ezra opened their jacket revealing a gun and said, quote, 
Talking like that could get you into a really serious situation. After this, despite the awkwardness of flashing a gun and threatening a family for no reason, according to that family, Ezra turned attention to their 12-year-old, who identifies as non-binary, alongside Ezra, pestering them with compliments, uncomfortably hugging them, and touching their hips. They also make claims that Ezra's eyes indicated drug use. Then comes allegations from a woman in Berlin who apparently had sex with Ezra in 2020, and maintained a friendship for the next two years via text, until Ezra returned to the city and planned to meet up. She invited Ezra over to the apartment, which began friendly, until the woman known as Nadia asked them not to smoke in the apartment, at which point Ezra went off, screaming she was a transphobic piece of shit Nazi, running around the apartment dropping cigarette ash everywhere, touching all of her possessions for about 30 minutes, until Nadia called the police and Ezra left. And of course, there are allegations that while Ezra was living in Iceland for a portion of 2020, they were renting out an Airbnb in which they run a sex cult that included teenagers. And of course, there's the ongoing story that Ezra Miller is allegedly hiding a woman and children from the authorities after they'd been staying with them at their farm in Vermont. The police are still searching for the 25-year-old and her one, four, and five-year-old children, which authorities say Ezra is hiding. The reason the authorities were involved is because the father of the kids contacted them worried about their safety, claiming Ezra has loose firearms in the house, bullets, drugs and alcohol just lying around in the open. The Vermont State Police continued to search for the woman and children, attempting to execute a court order to take the children away due to them being deemed unsafe. Before the court order, while the mother was being interviewed, she said, quote, Ezra may have firearms for self-defense purposes and they are stored in a part of the house that the children never go in. My kids are able to relax more into their healing because of the safety and nurturing Ezra has been providing for them. The allegations contradict this statement as some outlets report the one-year-old child found a loose bullet and was putting it in its mouth. Following this, Vermont State Police investigated a burglary at a home nearby to Ezra's farm. Someone broke in while the owners were not present and stole bottles of alcohol. And upon reviewing security footage, the police claimed to have probable cause to charge Miller with the offense of felony burglary into an unoccupied dwelling. Now there's probably more than this, but you get the picture. Ezra Miller is accused, not without some substantial evidence I might add, of doing some absolutely reprehensible things and so far, hasn't faced much of a consequence. While it is important to remember that these are allegations, at least in some cases, the overall picture is incredibly worrying. While I was writing the script for this video, Ezra released a statement in mid-August saying the following, having recently gone through a time of intense crisis, I now understand that I am suffering complex mental health issues and have begun ongoing treatment. I want to apologize to everyone that I have alarmed and upset with my past behavior I'm committed to doing the necessary work to get back to a healthy, safe and productive stage of my life. These statements, of course, follow rumours of potentially being blacklisted from Hollywood due to the last two years of headlines involving the once rising star. When someone is accused of doing something one time, it's much easier to give them the benefit of the doubt. You know, maybe it didn't happen, maybe we don't have all the facts. For Ezra, they have been accused of the same thing over and over, an adult making friends with children, flying children across the globe to spend time with, taking them from their family to live on a farm with easy access to drugs by their own admission, consistently assaulting people and going on unhinged rants. All of this makes it very hard to ignore, even if you take the most disgusting allegations and say that they aren't 100% true, there is enough for me to feel comfortable saying they are a danger to themselves, and most importantly a danger to those around them especially when those around them are often children. So in the end, considering what Ezra Miller has done, as well as what they've been accused of doing, I can't help but wonder, is the reason Ezra was so convincing playing psychotic characters because of their skills as an actor, or is it something much darker? I mean, it's got so bad that half the time the people on TV, inside the TV, they're watching TV. And what are all these people watching? People like me.